Hello and welcome all of you to the session of heat power engineering. In the previous lecture session, we had seen the first law of thermodynamics applied for the closed systems. Today we shall discuss the first law of thermodynamics but how it is applied for the open systems. Now from the concept of thermodynamic systems, you must have realized that open system is a kind of system which permits both mass and energy transfer. Since there is continuous flow of matter in the open systems, you must realize that to focus our attention on the open systems, we need to specify a certain region in the space by which we can do all the analysis. Now, this certain region in the space is defined as the control volume. So control volume or open system or flow process, they are synonymous thing. That means they are the same thing, but they are called by different names. Okay, so for open systems, while uh, applying the first law of thermodynamics for open system, we specify a certain region in the space, which we define as control volume. And then we go on with our analysis. Now the question is, since there is a continuous mass flow within the system, you must understand that there is the there is a continuous change of the thermodynamic properties by virtue of which we define a certain system. And now what happens is that uh, to, to to distinguish from the system and the, uh, from the surroundings to distinguish from the surroundings we need a boundary and this boundary in this case is called as control surface okay now there is a uh, very important thing you must understand since all the properties are going on changing because of the mass flow if we understand that the flow the flow parameters or the flow properties remains invariant with respect to time then that specific flow is called as the steady flow and if the properties remains invariant with respect to space then it will be called as a uniform flow so when both the properties uh, when the properties remains invariant with time and space it is called as steady uniform flow i believe you have caught uh, the specific things so we will be trying to apply the first law of thermodynamics considering that a steady flow is taking place okay so let us start our discussion on the first law applied for steady flow processes or uh, open systems before that we would uh, like to see the objective of this session so we will start analyzing the first law of thermodynamics for open system we will see that there are different quantities of energy which is uh, transferring through the system and there is a lot of interaction taking place between system and surroundings because of this open system so what happens the control volume or the fixed uh, space in the region can interact with the surroundings via the heat transfer or work transfer and you must understand that since there is mass flow energy is also carried through this mass okay so there are three types of energy transfer going on first of all the heat or work transfer between the system and the surroundings which is uh, uh, inherently present uh, when we discuss the interaction characteristics of the system and surroundings and because of the mass flow there is some energy quantities which are also associated with this mass flow so you need to consider those energy quantities also and then after deriving the steady flow energy equation we will try to apply this equation for the various open flow devices which are practically used and you will be uh, knowing that most of the engineering applications are uh, are uh, basically formed from the concepts of open flow devices or in other words we can say that most of the engineering devices are nothing but open flow devices okay so then our lecture will be completed since uh, in your syllabus there is no numerical allocate allocated with respect to this uh, 
of the closed systems so we will not take some numericals okay so let us see how the steady flow energy equation can be derived for open closed systems So, as you can see, uh, a control volume is defined here. We have defined two separate sections here, one, one dash and two, two dash. So, this is our inlet section and this is our outlet section. So, that means mass is entering the control volume here via this one, one dash section and it is leaving the control volume via this two, two dash section. Okay. Now the boundary which is separating this control volume um, from the surroundings is called as control surface. So now we have to understand that since there is mass flow and this flow is continuous, we need to understand the whole change of properties and all other energy interactions in terms of time. Okay, so we need to describe all the change of properties as well as all other possible work uh, or heat uh, transfers or any kind of energy transfers in the perspective of time that means so here you can see so um, here you can see there is two separate direction indicated that means it can uh, supply work or work can be done on this system but for our uh, sake of the discussion we will concede that and we will understand that this system is um, let us consider this system is performing some kind of work that is del w del t and it is receiving a certain amount of heat that is del q del t so the control volume is interacting with the surroundings via this del q del t heat transfer and it is continuously producing a work which we call as del w del t now in case of uh, open system generally you will find that the work is done via a shaft okay so let us consider this as a shaft so mm, this shaft is continuously producing this del w del t work okay so this shaft is continuously producing this del w del t work okay so now uh, first of all we'll try to do the mass balance and then we'll move on to the energy balance okay so before starting the mass balance we need to know what is the rate of the uh, rate of flow at inlet condition and outlet condition that means we have to assume a certain value at which the mass is entering the the fluid mass is entering the control volume so before starting that let us consider there is a certain amount of mass flow in the rate of del m1 del t okay so as we have already told we have to express all the properties in time format with respect to a certain time so we can assume that this del m1 del t is the mass flow at inlet condition and at outlet condition let us assume it is del m2 and via uh, sorry del m2 del t okay so you can see that at inlet condition the mass flow rate is del m1 del t and at outlet condition the mass flow rate is del m2 del t now after a certain time of flow let us assume that mv is the mass which is accumulated within the control volume so it is quite simple it's very simple to analysis that del m1 del t that means the mass which is entering the system minus del m2 del t so so this is the difference between the mass which is entering the system the control volume and the mass which is 
leaving the control volume so obviously it should be equal to del m v delta t okay so it is very simple to understand the mass flow rate at which the fluid is entering minus the mass flow rate at which the fluid is leaving the system will be the mass which is being stored or accumulated within the control volume so now we have done with, with this concept of uh, mass balance so let us see how we can perform the concept of uh, energy balance okay so now we will be much more keen to understand the energy balance so let us see how this uh, energy balance can be done okay so before um, starting the energy balance it is uh, quite evident that it is interacting with the surroundings that means the control volume is interacting with the surroundings via this heat transfer and this work transfer now both of these are positive here because we are we have considered that this is a heat input to the control volume and this is a work done on the surroundings so these two are considered as positive okay now what is the most important thing for open system you need to understand is that there is continuous mass flow okay this is the most important point so uh, in case of open system where there is continuous stream of flow you need to understand what is the energy that is carried by this continuous stream of flow okay so the fluid stream which is continuously flowing it carries four different type of energies okay so let us define e as the energy of the stream of fluid which is continuously flowing in the control volume so e is the uh, per uh, per unit mass energy so e is the total energy of all possible uh, types but expressed in per unit mass okay so as the fluid is moving so there should be kinetic energy as the fluid um, is moving in a uh, non conservative force field it will have a certain potential energy it should have a certain amount of internal energy because you know when the temperature is greater than 0 kelvin it will have some amount of internal energy or intermolecular energy stored within him now the fourth quantity is very important here the uh, stream of fluid which is flowing carries a certain amount of pressure energy or which we uh, know as flow work so flow work is much more uh, important which we are associated with so we have already discussed this concept of flow work right but here we are considering this flow work as the energy which is being carried by the continuous stream of fluid okay and you know the flow work or pressure energy is defined via the terms of pv okay if you remember the class of work and heat transfer you, sh uh, you will surely understand that the work uh, the flow work was defined as pv right so this is the total energy which is being carried by the continuous stream of flow so ek will be v square by 2 so all these terms are expressed per unit mass basis okay so it will be g h so this h uh, no, let us consider this is our datum line okay so this is our datum line so the inlet is at a certain height that means if we draw a line in here it will obviously have a certain height okay that height is expressed by h so for inlet condition it will be h1 and for the outlet condition it will be h2 so let us not get into that but the point is that this control volume the inlet and the outlet does have a certain height with respect to a fixed datum line okay 
so this is what we mean by this h now this u is very simple we have already written so there will be no change in that so u plus p v now we'll be interested in doing the energy balance so now uh, i have already mentioned that the energy which is entering the control control volume via the energy uh, the stream of fluid can be mentioned by this that it's a kinetic energy v is the velocity of the fluid gh is the potential energy per unit mass u is the specific internal energy and pv is the specific pressure energy okay so this when uh, we add up all these four types of energy we get the uh, total stored energy in a certain fluid stream which is moving into the control volume and leaving the control uh, volume in in the inlet condition and the outlet condition now if we consider this dv dt is the amount of stored energy after time t then we can easily formulate this equation now so this is the energy which is coming into the control volume so this is what this dm1 dt was the mass flow rate so you need to add up uh, you need to multiply the uh, the stream of fluid which is carrying a certain amount of energy which is mentioned by this formula here so dm1 dt into e1 so that uh, that is the energy which is coming into the control volume only because of the fluid stream right and this is the heat input to the control volume so similarly this is the energy dm2 dt into et which is leaving the control volume and this work output is uh, going out of the control volume okay so now if we put uh, the value of e1 in terms of this uh, kinetic energy potential energy specific internal energy and pressure energy we find the equation like this so this is what we call as the first law of thermodynamics which is applied for uh, steady uh, for open systems okay now this equation can also be modified once again now you know enthalpy or specific enthalpy was defined by this formula u plus pv okay so specific enthalpy is equal to u plus pv so here you can write here you can write h2 instead of u2 plus pv2 so this will simply simplify the energy uh, the terms the terms which are associated with uh, this problem so it will be h1 so this is your kinetic energy this is your potential energy and this is your enthalpy energy so this uh, internal energy and the pressure energy they together sum up to generate this concept of uh, enthalpy okay so i hope you have understood the concept of first law of thermodynamics for the open system now let us see uh, when the flow is of steady type right so now we'd be interested to find that how this first law of thermodynamics applied for open system which is described here goes on changing with respect to steady or un unsteady state now what do we mean by steady state steady state is a kind of state when the properties remain invariant or unchangeable with respect to time so the properties when undergoing a steady state they doesn't change with respect to a certain time okay so since it is maintaining a steady state that means the mass flow rate at which the fluid is entering the control volume it is exactly the same rate by which it is leaving the control volume so there is no mass accumulation this mv becomes zero similarly this ev also becomes zero so when 
this mg becomes zero the equation chains like that that means mass flow rate at inlet and mass flow rate at outlet becomes equal so we can write this dm1 dt is equal to dm2 dt so now let us uh, find out how this would change this above equation this equation which we had defined for so this equation can be applied for a uh, steady or unsteady state both now would like to find out how does this equation change when it is specifically mentioned as a steady state so we can uh, remove this uh, we can remove this part and it would become zero so zero here and this these two are same so um, since they are same we can write this as dm dt okay so that means they are same as dm dt okay so i will be uh, removing this one and two so both the system uh, both the inlet and the outlet condition have the same mass flow rate okay so we can uh, now modify this equation so let us remove this zero and we can simply write a equal to sign here that means dm dt into v1 square by 2 plus g h1 plus h1 so now i think this uh, would confuse uh, would confuse you confuse you Uh, so what I, I would like to do I would like to change this H into Z so that it becomes much more appropriate so let us change it here so let us write a Z here okay so it would be much better to understand since these two values uh, these two values are getting merged which is causing which would cause much misunderstanding so let us see including this now this is our equation at steady state okay so if uh, dm dt is uh, same for both the sides we can modify this equation uh, by dividing this dm dt for both the sides so this is this equation here is the steady flow energy equation but here you must understand that all the terms expressed here are expressed in in the rate basis that means all the terms are expressed per unit time okay so all the terms are expressed in the per unit time basis now if we divide divide this dm dt from both the sides we will find this equation changes into like this so we are dividing this equation by dm dt so it would be gz1 plus h1 h refers to the enthalpy plus dq dm okay so here you can find the change this dq dt which was earlier dq dt it changes into dq dm which would be equal to v square by 2 plus g z 2 plus h2 that is the enthalpy at second case plus del uh, so Please ignore this cut sign uh, del m okay so here all the terms are are expressed in per unit mass okay so this is per unit time so this is per unit time here all the terms all the energy quantities quantities are expressed in per unit time format whereas all the terms here are expressed per unit mass basis okay so 
here all the properties oh sorry here all the energy quantities are specific energy quantities whereas all the terms here are expressed in the rate form okay so this is nothing but a uh, nothing but an energy conservation law but the energy con uh, the energy quantities which are involved in this control volume are different from control mass system or flow system here there is kinetic energy because of the motion there is uh, potential energy there is enthalpy which comes up from the the summation of internal energy and the pressure energy and there is heat transfer so we know we have already defined that this control volume will interact with the surroundings via uh, a certain amount of heat and work transfer so here we have find fi found out the final equation so this steady flow energy equation can be expressed in two different formats where all the energy quantities would be expressed in per unit mass format that means all the energy quantities would be specific energy quantities but here all the energy quantities would be expressed in rate format i hope um, you have understood the, the case here so we would uh, like to end the concept of uh, steady flow energy equation here and now we would be interested to find out how this energy equation is applied for the real life that means there are some open flow devices like nozzle diffusers turbine compressors throttling device like uh, heat exchangers now i would i would uh, show you how this equation is governing the uh, characteristics of this different open flow device so let us find out uh, how this steady flow energy equation which we have just derived how this uh, governs the concept of the different devices in practical life so let us see that so as you can see a nozzle here this is your nozzle for you so you can see that the inlet area is quite large compared to the outlet area so when a fluid is entering this nozzle and leaving through this outlet portion you can assume and you can predict that there will be a reasonable pressure pressure drop and the kinetic energy of the fluid which is leaving the nozzle will be much more higher compared to the inlet velocity okay so a nozzle is a open flow device which increases the velocity of the fluid by increasing the kinetic energy in expense of the pressure drop which is causing at the control volume whereas a diffuser acts uh, exactly opposite to the nozzle it helps to increase the pressure of the fluid by by the expense of the kinetic energy okay so nozzle helps to increase the kinetic energy of the fluid at the outlet portion and diffuser helps to increase the pressure of the fluid at the outlet section now we would be very much interested to see that how the steady flow energy equation can be applied to the case of nozzle and diffuser so let us see nozzle first now here you can see that the whole nozzle is insulated now since the whole nozzle is insulated it means that this dq dm will be zero that means there is no heat transfer okay simple as that now you can obviously find that find that there is no shaft to our connecting device that means nozzle doesn't produce nor it consume any work so the work done would be also zero right and what we do in, in case of nozzle we neglect the potential energy changes okay so in case of a nozzle or in case of a diffuser we neglect the potential energy changes so that means this portion and this portion 
would be also zero or you can mm, uh, take it like this so this is your potential energy potential energy change okay so this is your change in potential energy right now this is very much close to zero so there is a very minor change which can be neglected okay so we are not concentrating on this potential energy and we consider to be as zero now what are the factors remaining so let us remove this so let us just clear up this let us clear up this also so now we can see there are only two distinct terms left one of them is enthalpy and the other one is the fluid velocity now since the inlet fluid velocity is very very low compared to the outlet flow velocity or in other words we can say the outlet velocity is very very high compared to the inlet fluid velocity so what we do we neglect this portion also so this equation reduces to h1 is equal to h2 plus v2 square v2 is your outlet velocity so now we can find the, the outlet velocity as 2 h1 minus h2 so this is your outlet velocity for the nozzle okay now uh, so this is your outlet velocity for the nozzle now if you uh, compare um, this information which we have just found out with that of a diffuser we'll see that this so i am just removing this i'm just removing this so for a diffuser there is no heat transfer there is no work output and the changes in potential energy can be also neglected but for a diffuser you will find that the inlet velocity is much much higher than the outlet velocity so in case of the diffuser what we can do we would be much more interested to neglect the outlet velocity so for if you are if you are concerned about diffuser so for diffuser so diffuser is a device which helps to increase the pressure energy of the fluid by expense of the inlet kinetic energy so for diffuser we can write we can neglect this v2 so the equation will be reduced to h1 plus v1 square by 2 is equal to h2 or we can write v1 as 2 okay mm, there would be a square root so root over of 2 into h1 minus h2 h1 is the inlet enthalpy and h2 is the outlet out enthalpy so now i hope that you have understood the concepts of nozzle and diffuser now depending on the nature of the fluid which is uh, entering the control volume of this nozzle the formulas may change okay so if we are uh, concerned that this fluid which is entering the nozzle is a uh, is an ideal gas then we can generate some other separate formulas also so depending on the nature of the fluid these formulas can be may, uh, may change okay so since we have discussed about nozzle and diffuser now uh, let me uh, take you to the concepts of throttling device so now we shall be interested uh, to find out how does a throttling device works so let us see that so here you can see the diagram of an partially open valve which we call as a throttling valve now 
when a fluid is flowing through a certain passage and if it is uh, compared to flow through a constricted passage the fluid motion would be obviously hindered or resisted now when the fluid motion is resisted we can easily uh, understand that there will be an appreciable pressure drop okay so the fluid motion is being restricted or being resisted that means the fluid is uh, undergoing an appreciable pressure drop okay the motion is uh, resisted and there is uh, consequently there is a certain amount of pressure drop now in that case case in that case we would like to uh, name this situation as throttling okay and we would say that the fluid has been throttled okay so we will be uh, interested to find out the characteristics of the steady flow energy equation in case of a throttling device so before that i would like to tell you the examples of throttling devices are this partially open valve partially open valve porous plug or we can also say that an orifice is also an example of this kind of throttling devices so now let us find out how the steady flow energy equation can be applied to this kind of devices so as you can see that there is a word mentioned here insu insulated okay since the throttling device is insulated now you can understand that this part would be zero so there is no heat transfer okay so and again there is no work transfer also because the fluid is not uh, producing or consuming any kind of work so the dw dm also becomes zero now let us find out that uh, what are the changes in potential energy the potential energy changes are very very small so this can be also neglected because um, the 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 potential energy depends on the height from the datum level so since there is no such change we can easily state that there would be very low potential energy changes okay so these these are the terms which are related to potential energy changes so this also becomes zero now in case of throttling the pipe velocities are very small okay in most of the throttling devices you will find the pipe velocity pipe velocities are very small so that the change in the kinetic energy would be also very small which can be also neglected so in case of throttling we will find that there is a very negligible change in kinetic energy also so for the throttling device we see that there is a constant enthalpy process going on that means the enthalpy remains constant throughout the process and uh, in most of the times in most of the cases would be like to interested uh, to call this throttling process as an isenthalpic process okay isenthalpic process that means the enthalpy remains constant throughout the throttling process okay isenthalpic process i hope that you have understood the concept of uh, throttling devices so let us move on to a very important part which we uh, which will be discussing now which we call as turbine and compressors so turbines and compressors are the most important open flow devices which are widely used in real life practices okay so let us see how does turbines and 
compressors can be related with the steady flow energy equation so let us move on to that so here we can find a uh, image of a turbine turbine is a device which produces some amount of work or work whereas comp compressor is a device which requires some external work okay so to do the desired effect so to get the desired effect compressor always needs some external work input whereas turbine always produces some kind of work output so this is the basic difference between turbine and compressor okay now you can find that this uh, green hatch lines indicate that the turbine is insulated that means there is no heat transfer in or out of the system that means this becomes zero now the changes in the potential energy can also be neglected for the turbine since the reference line or the datum line the height with respect to the datum line is quite similar for the inlet as well as the outlet condition so we can neglect these changes in the potential energy right now we can easily understand that there is a very uh, very small change in the kinetic energy that means in the kinetic energy in the inlet or the outlet condition of the fluid velocity there is minimum change so the changes in the kinetic energy can easily be neglected okay so this v1 square minus v2 square by 2 this is very small that means v1 square minus v2 square by 2 so this is the change in the kinetic energy regarding the inlet and the outlet condition which is very negligible and it can be compared to zero so we neglect the changes then we can find that the equation the steady flow energy equation reduces to h1 is equal to h2 plus dw dm so the per unit mass work output of the turbine can be calculated from this formula so h1 minus h2 that is the difference between the inlet and the outlet enthalpy of the fluid which is equal to dw dm okay so this is the formula by which any turbine can be governed or we can calculate the work output which is produced by the turbine okay so I hope you have understood the concept of turbine. Now what happens in compressor? Since there is an external work input provided to the compressor to get our desired uh, effect, we always give this uh, work transfer by the minus or the negative sign. That means the work is provided by the surroundings which is done upon the system okay so we know from the sign convention of work done when the work is done by the surroundings and it is acting upon the system we provide this work as negative in terms of negative so for compressor so we can write for compressor so this was for the turbine case and now we are dealing with the compressor condition okay so for compressor we can write that h1 is equal to h2 minus dw dm that means the work input which is required to work the compressor can be found out from this formula that means it is the difference between the outlet enthalpy and the inlet enthalpy okay so we can easily calculate by the above mentioned formula okay so this for turbine and this is for compressor okay so for compressor it is quite obvious that we are neglecting the kinetic energy changes 
we are neglecting the potential energy changes and compressor is also insulated so there is no heat transfer this dqdm term becomes zero so the whole steady flow energy equation reduces into h1 equal to h2 minus dwdm okay so therefore we can calculate the work done by the turbine and the work done on the compressor okay so you must remember it for your whole life as you are engineers uh, specifically automobile engineers you must know how does turbine work and how a compressor consumes work okay so i hope i have made myself clear the concepts of turbine and compressors now we shall move on to the next part which is which we call as heat exchangers so let us see how do um, how does the heat exchangers work and what are the steady flow energy equation which governs the heat exchanger uh, working procedure so let us see that heat exchangers are a certain kind of device where heat is transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid now for the inlet condition the both the fluids are entering this control volume the hot fluids are entering with a certain temperature let us consider th1 and leaving the heat exchanger with a temperature of th2 degree celsius now the heat is transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid which has an initial temperature of tc1 uh, degree celsius and an and a final temperature of tc2 degree celsius now we can easily understand that we know heat transfer takes place from the high temperature uh, system to the low temperature system since hot fluid has um, the higher temperature heat is getting transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid okay so this is uh, pretty simple now for the steady flow energy equation of heat exchanger we can easily write down let us consider m dot h is the mass flow rate of the hot fluid okay so just uh, uh, let me write down the steady flow energy equation of this heat exchanger so as you can see i have written down the steady flow energy equation now you must understand that there is very negligible changes in the potential energy and the kinetic energy so we have neglected that part okay now heat exchanger doesn't produce any kind of work transfer so the work output uh, which was described by the del w del m term can be easily neglected and there is no kind of heat transfer coming into the heat exchanger from the surrounding so the heat transfer also becomes zero only the there is an internal heat transfer going on from the hot fluid to the cold fluid which can be written down by the following formula so this is your enthalpy for the hot fluid which is entering this heat exchanger okay and this is your uh, enthalpy of the cold fluid which is entering the system which is entering the heat exchanger system okay so this is your uh, initial enthalpy after heat transfer the enthalpy obviously changes but there is no change in the uh, mass flow rate so the fluid flow is uh, going on continuously with the same rate okay so you can see since there are two different mass flow rates of the hot fluid and the cold fluid we have regarded here that m dot h that means d m h d t is your mass flow rate for the hot fluid whereas d m c d t is the mass flow rate of the cold fluid okay i think you have got it so this is a very simple energy balance where all the enthalpies of the heat transferred internally are balanced here okay so this is very simple i hope you have understood this concept of heat exchanger this is this is the most simplest open flow device okay 
there is some in kind, uh, internal heat transfer going on between the hot fluid and the cold fluid. That is the principle of heat exchanger. Okay. So whenever um, there is an there is a requirement of increasing the temperature of a certain fluid, we propose to use the heat exchangers. Okay. Okay. So now we have reached the end part of this lecture and I would like to do a summary of what we have discussed till now. So you can see this is the steady flow energy equation for unit mass and this is the steady flow energy equation for unit time. So I believe you have got uh, clarity about this equation. Okay, so this is the enthalpy energy uh, and this is the summation of U1 plus T1. Okay, so that means this is the stored internal energy within the system, and this is because of the flow wall, because of the mass which is entering and leaving the system. Okay, so at uh, now I think uh, this is the potential energy part, this is the kinetic energy, this is the heat transfer per unit mass, and here you can see the work which is being consumed or work which is being done by the system is given here okay now this is the same equation but in different terms uh, this equation is expressed for in time where this m1 dot means the mass flow rate at the inlet condition okay so m1 dot means the mass flow rate at the unit uh, inlet conditions okay so with this we would like to end our lecture here and I believe we have got uh, clear concepts about the steady flow energy equation, how this equation expresses the relationship or the energy interactions of the system with surroundings from the point of view of mass, heat and work transfer. So with this, goodbye and thank you, thank you very much for your time.